and welcome. Today's lesson is learning how to judge Ladino clover. Well, some things you need to consider before you're judging is, again, take a look at the scorecard. The scorecard is really the key, I think, becoming very, very successful at what you do. Uh, by learning it, you not only learn the terms, but in particular, you start learning a little bit more about the actual crop itself. There are basically two kinds of, or two things you need to be judging when you're looking at Ladino clover. The reproducible factors and non-reproducible factors. The re reproducible factors are the thing that's going to reproduce out in the field. Things like weeds, um, also other crops, those kind of things. Where the non-reproducible factors are things such as inert material, chaff, those kinds of things that the cleaner can uh, take out. Um, so when you're looking at today's sample in particular, look for noxious weeds, yellow star thistle, daughter, those kind of things. Because remember, these, these particular seeds are really, really small, and it doesn't take much uh, for them to be outcompeted out in the field for resources, things like sunshine, water, um, nutrients, those kind of things. So when they're bigger plants and they have bigger leaves and they shade and they take away the water, those are things you have to tr try to predict in your reasons. So don't forget to look at the scorecard as you are judging um, any, kind of, um, any kind of seed. Today I've done things a little bit differently on sample number one and all the rest of them for that matter, is I've taken very tight shots and I've really focused in on the detail of the seed. Because they're so small, it doesn't really make sense for me to do general impressions because you couldn't see them anyway. So I'm going to take some tight shots and we're going to be talking about not only the general impressions, but also we're going to be taking and judging the sample as we go. So let's get started on the first one. Um, one of the first things that should impress you about this particular seed is very bright. And what that means, it's, it's relatively a, a new crop. So it's going to have a good germination rate. And as we zoom in on it a little tighter, you'll see not only that, but the uniformity in its size is also real critical. So when we take a look at it, we're looking at a clean seed. We're taking a, a uniform seed that's really, really bright. So that tells us this, this seed is going to do very well out in the field in terms of its germination rate. Let's go ahead and look at sample number two. Right off the top, as you can see in sample two, it already has inert material. So it's not as clean as our sample number one. And if we look river very, very close, we'll see some little inconsistencies right in here. At first, I want to focus in on see if it is a weed seed of any type. So let's look at that. You can see, well, it's... It, it's not. It's there's little stones, uh, little pieces of gravel. In other words, this particular uh, sample is pretty dirty. Um, the uniformity is fine. The color is good. But if you can see there, you have little stones, little um, pebbles in the sample. Not a big deal, but just it's just dirty. It needs to go into the cleaner again to get some of that stuff out of there. So if we were to take a look at this and put down some notes, dirty. It's got chaff and has small clods or uh, pebbles in it as well. Let's look at number three. Uh, number three, uh, I, I, you really can't see much of, of anything until we kind of zoom in on it. And all of a sudden, what happens is these little boat-like shaped seeds. And here's another one there. And it looks like another larger seed there. So as we look at this sample, it's got all kinds of things in it. And two things that, that I notice is number one has some other crop. And that other crop, that larger kidney-shaped seed, uh, like right here, that is alfalfa. These uh, seeds are um, buckhorn plantain. I'm going to back up the video for a little bit and see if I can't. Yeah, there we go. That's the money shot right there. You can see this seed right here. That's alfalfa. This one's buckhorn plantain. You can see it's kind of dug out like a dugout canoe. And here's some more alfalfa there and there and there. So this one is pretty evident. We have another crop and we have a weed seed. So let's go on to the next one. Number four. 
Uh, number four, this one's a little blurry, but I still think you'll be able to see some things in it. As we focus in a little tighter, you'll see right away a black shiny seed right there. I'm going to stop the film right there because that's a good shot. Um, these seeds right here, right there, all over the place, black and shiny, really indicative of pigweed. Whether it be red root or prostrate, they all give these really dark, shiny seeds, glossy seed. And then if you take a, a little closer look, these kind of are a little off color there. There, they're more rounded. Uh, they're a little bit larger. These, that seed, that seed. And you probably can't see it, but it has kind of a moonscape or a rough seed coat on it. And that beige color and the roundness and the moonscape means that it is... Yeah. It should be fairly quick, uh, quick to you. Is uh, it's going to be uh, not weed? Excuse me, pigweed and the noxious weed daughter. So we have daughter, which is a noxious weed, and then of course a pigweed. And, and by now you should know that any noxious weed in there knocks it to the, to the bottom of the class almost immediately. So let's go ahead and look at our reasons for today. And as I talk about the reasons, I'll, I'll reveal each of, of the placing. As you can see right now, the order is going to be one, two, three, and four. So let's go ahead and get started. Sir, I place this class of Ladina Clover in the order of one, two, three, four. Today, uh, sample number one is an obvious winner in, in today's category. I really like its uniformity and its shape. I love its brightness. I also believe because of this brightness and uniformity, I believe this is to be a uh, relatively new crop. And I think that they'll also uh, germinate the, the most amount of seed in the class today. Because it's a smaller seed, uh, I, I feel that con feel conditions, um, when they're right, will really enhance this seed and its productivity. In sample number two, I placed it in second place. It too was a very clean, bright sample, but I had to place it in second uh, primarily because it's not going to be quite as, as profitable because it has to be cleaned more. It's a dirty sample. looks like a field run sample to me, and that means it's got to be taken to the cleaner and then screened a little bit more so that we can get a, more of a pure um, run of seed. And that's why I placed sample number two in second place. In third place, I put sample number three. Number three ha had a couple of uh, issues with it. Number one, it had another crop, that being alfalfa. Because alfalfa and lindino are very closely linked in terms of, uh, of the kind of plants they are, they're going to be competing for the same resources out in the field. And alfalfa being larger and more aggressive, I think, uh, are, is going to harm some of the, uh, the stand when we have it out in the field. The other reason that I put it in third place is because it had quite a few um, buckhorn plantain seeds. Uh, that, uh, too, is going to probably overshadow and take water and, and resources away from the seed. And it just will not be able to make a sufficient stand and as clean and as, as thick as, let's say, number one or two. So that's why I placed it in third place. And in last place, in the fourth position today, I put a sample number four. I think this is an obvious uh, bottom uh, sample, primarily because of the, the two seeds that are in it. Number one is pigweed and has a lot of seed uh, in, in it. It's a, it's a shiny black seed and I think it will definitely outcompete, uh, especially in the seedling stage. But the real reason I put it in, in last place is because if you take a look at these ovals that I put in here, you'll notice that those roundish seed are daughter. Uh, daughter is an extremely invasive weed. It's a weed that we're trying to control in California, so it's a noxious weed. And all of its golden filaments that get out there will will basically suck the literally the life out of that uh, out of that stand and really make it uh, something that you cannot sell. And it it could be dependent on how much seed is in it, a uh, total loss. And I see in this particular sample quite a bit of daughter. So for these reasons, I place this class of Ladino Clover in the order of one, two, three, and four. So there you have it. And I, I had a, a guy tell me the other day, and I kind of thought this was a pretty cool quote, and I, I really got a kick out of meeting a lot of you guys at the last contest, and I enjoyed talking to you, and I'm telling you, especially those of you who are freshmen, stay with it, because this particular 
a, a quote I, I think has a lot to do with you. You probably question, man, I can spend a lot of time at this. Is it really worth it? Well, is the juice is the juice worth the squeeze? And what that basically means is, is the end result, uh, the efforts of all your work really worth the hard work and dedication? And I gotta tell you, it's yes, but only you can really answer that question uh, over time. It may take you two, three, sometimes four years to get to that point where you get the juice. And I hope you'll get an opportunity to do that. We'll see you at the next contest. Thanks for listening.